The next item of business is topical questions, and at question number one, I call Edward Mountain. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on whether CMAL should accept into service the Glen Sanox and 802 ferries in light of reports that they no longer meet the original basic design criteria. Minister Fiona Hislop. Any further delay to the delivery of these lifeline vessels is extremely disappointing, and we have made that clear to the Yard. CMAL will only accept delivery of the vessels after they receive the required sign-off from the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency and the Class Society. CMAL has been clear, along with CALMAC and Transport Scotland, that all systems, including LNG, will be commissioned before handover from Fergus Marine Port Glasgow. The recent update from the CEO of the Yard set out the work and timelines on that basis. The reduced passenger capacity noted in the update from the Yard is expected to be formally accepted through appropriate contract amendments. Edward Mountain. Uh, and I thank the Minister for that answer. Interestingly, of the seven bids that were originally for the ships, uh, Shipyard C and Shipyard D were not accepted because they didn't meet the requirement of 1,000 passengers, 120 to 7 cars and 16 uh, 40, uh, big lorries. So we know that there's 15% less passengers on the, on the latest uh, recommendation. How many less cars, how many less lorries? Minister. So my uh, understanding, and I will stand to be corrected if I'm incorrect about this, is that there will be no um, impact on the vehicle aspects. On the passenger aspects, there's regular meetings to plot the peak demand on the routes that uh, the, the vessels will be um, obviously uh, be on. And so therefore, in terms of that issue, the compromises that have had to be made, and there have been, um, have been agreed in relation to the issues that have been raised by the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, and of course they themselves are the responsibility directly of the contractor, which is Ferguson Marine. Edward Mountain. Well, Minister, Islanders haven't accepted there's going to be less passengers, and the fact that we're in this position is because Ferguson Marine only spoke to the Coast Guard Agency in June of this year about whether the boats met the specification that they'd set out, based on 2016 dated regulations. So what we've got is late ferries, under capacity, over budget, and not what the islanders were promised. Are you happy with that as a minister? Through the chair always, minister. My responsibility is minister for transport and to represent the interest of islanders, many of whom I have met personally over the summer period. What they want is to have resilience in the fleet. They want not just two ferries, they want all six ferries. And those six ferries that will be completed by 2026 will provide the resilience in the fleet. What they don't want um, are speculative headlines that undermine um, the understanding that the vast majority of ferries in Scotland do run to time, that there are far more passengers being carried than ever before, and there are far more routes than ever before. That doesn't help when there are issues, and we're going into a period of dry dock, but we'll put more pressure on the system. So in terms of this issue, uh, I want to make sure that these all six of them are in place, and then, then, Mr Mountain, I'll be happy. Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Deng Xiaoping, Paramount Leader of China for more than a decade, once said, and I quote, it doesn't matter if a cat is black or white as long as it catches mice. Does the Minister agree that what is important to islanders at this point is not so much the ferry design, but that the vessels currently under construction in Port Glasgow join the fleet and begin serving our island communities at the earliest possible date? Minister. The, the, the member reflects the interests of his constituents that have been relayed to me directly in the meetings that I've had with them. I think it's a responsibility of the contractors to ensure that the uh, MCA's requirements are met. That is an iterative process. I know uh, Mr Mountain has had interest in this um, from his position as convener of the Net Zero Energy and Transport Committee, and he has um, asked the Cabinet Secretary for Eco Economy uh, a number of questions, and that letter is due to be responded to by Friday, and that also means that we shared with the rest of Parliament. Willie Rennie. The last time 
the price of these ferries mushroomed. I asked if any minister would lose their job. So far, no one has paid the price. More delays, higher costs today. So I ask again, is any minister going to pay the price of this fiasco? Minister. I think, I think clearly um, the responsibilities and the difficulties um, that the Yard itself has faced and these contracts have faced have been absolutely laid bare for everyone to see. And uh, I think the recognition of the responsibilities of everyone concerned um, has been relayed. My position as Minister for Transport is to represent the interest of islanders, bo both in terms of tourism, but also in terms of freight, and to make sure that the systems that we have in place can be responsive. I have direct responsibility for Seamile and Calmac. I don't have direct responsibility for the Ferguson Yard itself. But in making sure that we do have a yard that can face the future, we'll be standing by the workforce in that yard as well. And I distinctly remember certain people, not least from the member's own party, that made that requirement at the time when those contracts were awarded. Thank you. Question number two, Martin Whitfield. I'm very grateful, Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the reported proposed rationalisation of the Police Scotland estate. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. Presiding Officer, as members know, responsibility for the police estate is for the Chief Constable uh, under the Scottish Police Authority scrutiny. The Police Scotland estate's strategy, published in 2019, outlined plans to dispose of outdated, underinvested and underused properties and to develop a modern fit-for-purpose estate through consideration of a number of options, including co-location with partner organisations in modern, well-equipped accommodation. Since the strategy's publication, Police Scotland has relocated and co-located in a number of areas and continues to take forward projects to better suit their requirements and improve service delivery. This can provide better joined up services for communities and ensure we have efficient and effective public services for taxpayers' money. Future proposals like those previously will be subject to consultation. Martin Whitfield. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response? Elected members across the south of Scotland have received a letter from Police Scotland informing them of the severe financial strain that Dumfries and Galloway Division Service is facing. They have had to identify more than £50 million worth of cuts this year alone. But the letter also acknowledges that much of Police Scotland's estate is not fit for purpose and 30 police buildings will be disposed of. It has been reported that in South Lanarkshire, all the police stations across Rutherglen and Hamilton West will be closed. In the light of this, can the Cabinet Secretary provide an assurance that no new police stations will be closed to the public across Dumfries and Galloway? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, it is important to emphasise uh, to the member that this government, despite UK government austerity, has made year-on-year -year increases in investment into policing in this country, and that is to the benefit of the member's area, but also to the nation as a whole. Uh, the budget for Police Scotland has risen by 6.3% this year, an additional uh, £80 million. I have been assured by the current Deputy Chief Constable uh, and indeed the previous Chief Constable uh, that despite the tough choices ahead uh, that this pr pr provides for uh, safe and stable uh, policing uh, in the future. Um, in terms of the estate uh, that the member raises, it is important to recognise that Police Scotland uh, inherited uh, decades of underinvestment by previous administrations, uh, bearing in mind that two-thirds of the properties uh, that they currently have predate 1980. So there is indeed uh, a job of work to do in terms of investing uh, in those estates uh, to ensure that they not only uh, meet the needs uh, of the workforce, but most importantly, that they meet the needs of the communities that we all seek to serve. Martin Whitfield. Well, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. It has been reported that the plans to close a list of Lanarkshire police stations were circulated to the Scottish Government earlier this year. Do the Scottish Government agree they received a list of the Lanarkshire police stations that had been identified for closure prior to the PERDA period? 
Cabinet Secretary. Well, let me put on the record for the member and for Chamber, Presiding Officer, while I am aware that there is a range of work underway in relation to the 2019 Police Scotland Estate Strategy, I am not aware of any specific details, including for Lanarkshire eh, or indeed Dumfries. And at no point has the Scottish Government eh, requested any withholding um, of details, as perhaps the member has read um, elsewhere in the press. And it is important to stress, and I'm sure eh, Mr Whitfield understands this, that these are operational decisions for the Chief Constable eh, under the scrutiny of Scottish Police Authority and I'm quite sure he would be the first to object if I overstepped my role in remit in regards to matters of policing in this country. Russell Finlay. Thank you very much. Two of the most senior figures in Police Scotland use the phrase slash and burn to describe SNP cuts. The former Chief Constable warned that Scotland's policing model is unsustainable due to SNP cuts. The Police Federation warned that people may die as a result of SNP cuts. Crime is rising, public confidence is falling, yet police stations are closing. So when will SNP ministers fund our police officers and estate? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, I am quite sure that I do not need to school Mr Finlay in the facts of the matter, but the facts of the matter is that since 2016-17, this Government has made a year-on-year -year increase in investment, and in fact $11.6 billion it has been invested since the creation of Police Scotland. We have more police officers per capita than England and Wales. Our police officers remain uh, the highest paid in the UK. Public confidence in policing remains high according to the Scottish Crime uh, and Justice uh, Survey. There is no doubt that there are challenges ahead as a result uh, of many years of UK government austerity. But as always, this government, we will uh, rise to the challenge uh, and serve uh, the interests of policing in this, in, the, in, in this country. And it's imperative that we deal with the facts of the matter at hand. We have not cut budgets. Audrey Nicholl. Thank you. Last week, DCC Fiona Taylor told the Scottish Police Authority that there are now over 60 co-locations of police with partners and that this, and I quote, providing more sustainable, more modern and safer workplaces for our people. So can the Cabinet Secretary outline some of the benefits of this approach and can she confirm that the Scottish Government is still committed to having police at the heart of our communities? Cabinet Secretary. Beside officer, I represent a constituency where uh, Police Scotland is co-located uh, with the Integrated Joint Board, uh, with the local authority, uh, with the court system and with a, a whole range of other partners. And we have to um, uh, accept, as the member uh, intimated, that to date uh, Police Scotland has uh, introduced 60 uh, co-locations the length and breadth of Scotland. And this is about responding to uh, policing in the 21st century uh, and indeed proven visibility and continuing to be at the very heart uh, of our communities and first and foremost serving the needs of those communities uh, with a joined up value for money public service. Stephen Kerr. What we've seen this afternoon and heard this afternoon is nothing but hand washing from the Cabinet Secretary. She claims she's not accountable for any of the things that are happening in Police Scotland, but she is accountable for the level of funding. And when David Kennedy, the General Secretary of the SPF, says any notion that policing will remain the same and will remain as safe as it has been is just not going to happen. The government needs to realise that. And then he goes on to say, as Russell Finlay pointed out, people may die. Why on earth is the Cabinet Secretary not listening? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, presiding officer, I uh, absolutely always adhere to my responsibilities day in, day out, but I am also very aware of the accountability that not only I have to uh, this government, the people of Scotland and indeed this chamber, but that also the SPA and the Scottish uh, uh, Police Service uh, and our local authorities, that we all have accountability at each and every level. And the facts of the matter, and I'm quite entitled to point out the facts of the matter, is that this government has continued to increase investment year on on year in Police Scotland and in fact the increase in investment for Police Scotland uh, exceeds uh, the increase in the overall uh, judge justice budget so we have always uh, where possible it uh, went the extra mile. Thank you that concludes topical questions.